What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts. My name is Spidey and I use my degree in Sociology and Psychology, my certifications in Criminal Interrogation and Body Language Analysis, and over 10 years experience as an award-winning mentalist to teach people behavioral analysis and practical psychology on stages and television shows all over the world. Oprah Winfrey took some serious criticism on social media lately after footage of a photo shoot promoting the movie The Color Purple was published. Commenters suggested that her body language suggests some tension between her and one of the stars of the movie, Taraji P. Henson. But what can their body language, facial expressions, and word choice tell us? Were the fans onto something and was there real tension there? Or was this just one big misunderstanding? Okay, so because there are a lot of moving parts to what we're covering this week, and I want everyone to be on the same page and I want you all to have context before we look at these videos, let me really quickly in a nutshell tell you what the story is. Oprah Winfrey's relationship with the movie The Color Purple is not new. It spans decades. So in the 1985 version, she was one of the stars of the movie and she played the role of Sophia. And for that role, she was nominated for an Academy Award. Now, 38 years later, she's one of the producers of the remake of the movie. In the new version of the movie, Oprah's iconic role of Sophia went to actress Danielle Brooks, and the movie has a lot more familiar faces, including Fantasia Barino and Taraji P. Henson. Now, on a recent interview to promote the movie on SiriusXM, Gail King interviewed the director, Blitz Bazawule, as well as Danielle Brooks and Taraji P. Henson. And during this interview, at some point, Gail asked Taraji about a statement she had made where she had said she was thinking about quitting acting. What followed was a very emotional moment from Taraji where she opened up about the pay gap that black actresses have to deal with and the hardships that come with it. Around the same time, there was footage that surfaced of a photo shoot at the Empire State Building of the actresses, the director, and Oprah Winfrey, who was one of the producers of the movie. And a lot of the viewers noticed that there was something going on with the body language between Taraji and Oprah. So at this point, a lot of people started connecting those two events, right? Because if Taraji was complaining about the pay, then it stands to reason that her frustrations were towards some of the producers. And therefore, maybe that can explain the tension. So shortly after, she went on social media herself, she posted a picture and a paragraph about how positive Oprah Winfrey has been and the beacon of light that she's been for the entire cast and crew. So in this video, we're gonna look at all of those things and we're gonna see what the body language suggests. Let's start with the interview with Gail King. So I'm gonna play the clip, take a look. Don't just focus on Taraji, a lot going on with her, but also look at Danielle sitting right next to her. There's some stuff going on there as well. Here it is, take a look. And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to just say, you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, mm. I'm just tired of working so hard, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm. Um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. The math ain't mathing. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind yes, us. Yes. They have to get paid. Okay, so I actually want to start by talking about Danielle Brooks. She's the one in yellow sitting in the middle. So when you work with someone on a movie like this and you go on these press tours, you really develop a sense for the way they communicate and the rhythm. And there are a lot of signs here that Danielle knew that something was off before it was very obvious. So first off, Gail is asking this question about quitting acting almost in a sarcastic, playful way. She's trying to bring it up a little more lightly and playfully. And the moment she says that, we see two things with Danielle. One of them is an eyebrow flash. So when Gail says that Taraji was thinking of quitting acting, we see Danielle's eyebrows go up for a second and very subtly, her head kind of approaches like this towards Gail. The movement of the head is subtle, but those eyebrows are unmistakable. And there are a lot of things that could cause an eyebrow flash. I have a whole video about the research behind this, but one of those things is surprise. When something surprises us, those eyebrows come up. And in this case, that's exactly what it is, especially with the approaching of the head like that. It's pretty unmistakable whether she hadn't heard this before or she had heard it, but hadn't thought about it in this interview. It's surprising to her in this moment to hear that Taraji had said she would quit acting. 
So we have this surprise and then the eyebrows come down, which is deep thought or curiosity. It can mean other things, like for example, with anger, those eyebrows come down, but that has a glare and a lot more tension in the face. So in this case, she turns her attention towards Taraji and the eyebrows come down. She's curious as to why she would have said that. Finally, just to conclude with Danielle and why I say she was one of my clues that, okay, something is serious here is because as Taraji is preparing her answer. And at first, all we're hearing is some sounds. Danielle's curiosity right in the beginning really gets intense as she really shifts her entire attention towards Taraji. She knows something's up. She knows something's off here. This isn't the normal talk about the movie, promote the movie lightly. Something serious is happening here. She knew that. Now let's talk about Taraji. So again, Gail approached the subject almost in a joking, exaggerated, sarcastic manner. And usually when that happens in an interview, you see the person who's receiving the question kind of laugh along and then say, yeah, you know, I was experiencing this, 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 here's what happened. But in this case, Taraji doesn't laugh. So it's being presented as a joke, but she's almost countering that and saying, it's not a laughing matter. Like she doesn't laugh along with that lighter mood. In fact, the first things that do happen is we hear her go, hmm, almost with this dip, hmm. And then pause. Um, hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, mm. Now these are called verbal leaks. These kind of verbal hesitations. Um, uh, hmm. And typically they happen when we're hesitating or need time thinking about an answer. But in this case, I don't know that she's thinking about the answer. I think she's thinking about, do we want to go down this path? Do we want to, is this the time to derail this conversation which is about a movie and talk about this. Then the emotion hits because we get another mm, and immediately in that moment she surrenders to the emotion where we see her turn her head to her left so she turns away from the camera. We see her hand come up to her face like this. We see the eyes close and the lips compress. So very often we talk about on this channel about when sadness hits what the normal response is. So in most cases when we're in public and we're overcome by sadness, we want to hide it. Because in the way that we evolved, it's not in our best interest to show weakness and sadness is a weakness. So very often when somebody gets sad during a speech, you might see them look down, turn away, even say, excuse me, hands come up often. We just need a moment. On the other hand, we've often seen people on the channel who are faking sadness or trying to show that they're sad when they're not necessarily that sad. And they often make the mistake of displaying it, putting that sadness on display and very often it feels quite unnatural to those watching. Some of you might remember my coverage of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial and one of the things that I talked about that circulated the most online and ended up on all kinds of news shows was that when Amber Heard was talking about sad things, we would see her display her sadness to the jury. And I said that behaviorally, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, after the trial concluded, way after my coverage, one of the jurors came out and said that those moments where she was crying and making eye contact with them and displaying it to them made the jury very uncomfortable and they were referring to those as crocodile tears. Now, I wanna be careful about absolute statements. I'm not suggesting that every single time someone's sad for real, that they instantly do all these things to hide it. All I'm saying is that in that moment with Taraji, it certainly feels like a real moment of sadness is hitting her because her reflex is to conceal it rather than to try to play it up to the cameras. And all these things we're seeing are consistent with that. Lip compression is often us holding something in. It could be an opinion, it could be emotion, but that's when we're trying to hold something in. Eye blocking or slow blinking is something we talk about a lot on the channel. This is where we close the eyes for an extended period of time mid conversation. And the research shows that this is either to keep thoughts in or keep thoughts out. So whether you're trying to remember something or trying to hold on to a positive moment or something negative is happening and you just, just want to keep it out. In this case, it's her trying to keep those emotions away. After she comes away from that emotional moment, we see a cluster of behaviors that are very, very common together in a moment like this. So we see her stare at Gail. It's a very serious, pensive look. And then her eyes start to flutter. This is where the eyes start to blink really rapidly. And then she looks up and then back at Gail. And this is where she starts to talk about the thing. This cluster is very common in people just before they spill the beans or open up a can of worms, just before a big confession. 
So I've looked at thousands of hours of criminal interrogations. I've conducted thousands of hours of one-on-one -on -one interviews. And just before a big reveal happens or a big confession, quite often we see that kind of very serious stare. And it's the person just gauging the interviewer. It's that moment of, okay, can I trust this person? Is this the time? Are they ready for this? So they're kind of looking at that. And then we see that flutter. Flutter is very consistent with processing. When we're processing information, those eyes start to blink really rapidly in succession. And then the eyes moving around, not necessarily up for her, they go up, but you might see it with a downwards thing like this. It might go to the side, it doesn't really matter. It's, we're almost retrieving that information, like we're ready to go. So it's like, it's almost like ready, set, go. And here we go. So very, very common with just before a confession. Okay, now we're gonna look at the rest of the interview. We're gonna look at the photo shoot from the Empire State Building, which has a lot of interesting body language. And we're gonna look at her social media post and talk about something that a lot of people seem to have missed. But before we do, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn the notifications on for more behavioral analysis and practical psychology content. Every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what I just did and I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Because mm -hmm. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? What is it telling me? And what does it tell me? Mm. Yeah. You know? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the f am I doing? I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. yeah no, don't apologize. I, I think it's an important message for people to hear because we see the lights, camera, action. Yep. Yep. And yep. then and they tell so me glamorous. we don't yes. translate overseas. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll talk about the behaviors in just a sec, but I want to start by talking about the phenomenon she mentioned that a lot of people don't know about, but it's absolutely accurate. It's when she said, I'm tired of being told we don't translate overseas. So it's a little known fact that in 2018, China became the biggest box office in the world, meaning that there are more moviegoers since 2018 in China than any other region in the world. At the time, the research was already aware of the fact that in China, they favor movies with light-skinned actors in leading roles. So movies with light-skinned actors perform better in China. So a study around that time, actually a little bit before 2018, while that box office was growing to number one, a study showed that there was an increase in Hollywood productions with light-skinned actors in leading roles because they were keeping that market in mind. This phenomenon is referred to as colorism. Even within a race, the phenomena exists. So even within white actors, they favor light-skinned white actors than actors who are white, but a little more tanned. Same across cultures. In fact, it even applies to fictional characters. They favor fictional characters that are lighter in color than darker. And this has never been more obvious then if you look at the change in the poster for the 2016 Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. If we look at the American version of the poster, there's a lot going on, but pay attention to a couple of important details. First, for those of you who are unfamiliar with BB-8, he is the little droid, the little kind of mechanical looking snowman on the left. So he's pretty small towards the center on the left. And then if we look at the right, more importantly, we see the character Finn, who was played by John Boyega. That's the gentleman holding the blue lightsaber. And right next to him, we see Chewbacca, who is a Wookiee, who's a classic in the series. And he's right there as well, pretty central, holding a gun. Now, if we look at the Chinese version, you immediately see some drastic changes. First, Finn, who is very important in the movie, but is dark skinned, has been shrunk down and moved much lower. So he's really not in focus anymore. They've also entirely removed Chewbacca. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier. It's not even about race, but a darker character has been completely removed. And BB-8, who's a droid, but is much more light in color, has been blown up and put right in the middle. And then Han Solo and Princess Leia, both of which are light-skinned, have been blown up and raised as more of a central focal point. So literally they've removed dark characters or shrunk them a lot and they've overemphasized lighter characters even if one of those characters is an object. The other thing you'll notice is that the Chinese poster puts a lot more focus on the action 
because we could see a lot more of the lasers on the right and a lot of the spaceships shooting at each other, a lot more focus on that. And at the bottom, we see a lot more of those armies because big blockbuster action movies do well in China. So this poster is emphasizing all the things that the research has shown is favored in China. So colorism may not be the exact same thing as racism, but it would be hard to debate that they're not highly related. And studio owners and producers know this, and they bring that into the negotiation room. So a lot of dark-skinned actors and actresses do get paid less than light-skinned actors and actresses because of the knowledge that those movies will probably not perform well in now the biggest box office, which is China. So in this moment, Taraji is expressing a deep frustration that is not only pertaining to one movie, one negotiation, one role, but something she constantly has to deal with and her friends and family have to constantly deal with. Because like she said, every time she breaks that glass ceiling at the next negotiation, right back down to zero, you have to start from scratch. But the floodgates really open, not when she's complaining about her own career, but it's when Danielle chimes in and says, and what is it telling me? And they both understand exactly what she means in that moment. What she means is Taraji has been nominated for a ton of awards. She's well-established. She's recognized as an incredible actress, but Danielle is up and coming. So if Taraji has to fight these fights now, what does it mean for the next generation that's up and coming? So it's when Danielle says that, that we see from Taraji a shrug. So her hands turn up like this and her head goes up like this with a tilt as she acknowledges what Danielle said. And this is what we call an epistemic shrug. It's a shrug of knowledge. It's her going, right, good point. There's nothing more to add to that. Like when someone makes a solid point and we go, yeah, yeah, good point. That's exactly what that is. And that's where Taraji gets really emotional because she says, if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the F am I doing? And it's that, that's where she surrenders to the emotion, to the frustration, to the sadness. She breaks down, instantly says, I'm sorry. And the I'm sorry, it's hard to tell if it's for the swear word or for just instantly breaking down, but the hand comes up and does what we call a hand visor. So typically we come up like this and we block like this, but she's on an interview, she's got the makeup, she's aware of the fact that she looks a certain way for the cameras, so she's blocking like this rather than like this. And even you'll notice in the way that she's wiping her face with that tissue, it's never these big wipes where the makeup is. It's more like these little pats around where the makeup is. So that hand comes up and she just surrenders completely to this frustration. And now she's all emotion because as she's in that moment, Gail tries to pick up the interview and talks about, you know, how important it is to acknowledge this. And she just completely cuts her off by saying, and I'm tired of being told that we don't translate overseas. She's in her head. She's in this moment of emotion. And I want you to compare that. I want you to look at this moment versus the moments we were talking about earlier with Amber Heard, for example, where it was more on display, like look at this sadness versus this breakdown into herself and just being, she's not acknowledging Gail. She's not playing to Gail. She's not playing to the camera. She's just getting this off her chest. Doesn't matter what Gail is saying. Doesn't matter who's listening. She just has to say this. So it's almost 0% about perception and it's almost 100% about delivering that message. So the fans heard the message and anyone who watched that interview felt the impact of that emotion. I think it's hard to argue that this isn't a legitimate moment of frustration and sadness. So people felt that. So when the footage came out of the photo shoot at the Empire State Building, we're already going into that with the knowledge that Taraji is upset with the pay, including what she got for this movie, because she's complaining about this for an interview at this movie. So people are going in with that knowledge. Now, keep in mind, Oprah is one of the producers of this movie. So we're going into this photo shoot with that knowledge that there's some frustration here from Taraji and that Oprah was part of the production. So it's hard to look at the footage that we're going to look at right now without those lens. It's hard to erase this emotional moment she had connected to this movie from our minds. It's hard to be unbiased, but let's try. Let's look at these behaviors without any bias whatsoever. So we're gonna watch Oprah walk up to where the photo is gonna be taken. And at that moment, Taraji is the only one there. And then the other actresses join, the director joins, and just watch the interaction. Try to notice what you're seeing with both of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Did you think you could escape now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Get him. 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 Here we go. Where are we looking? Right here. Oh, wait, we're starting right down here. Okay. Everybody right down here, and then we're going to go all the way around the, around the ring. Come on, Fantasia. I want to be a part of it. Now you want to be a part of it. You guys are going to do my little song. Okay, I'm sure you guys caught a lot of that. But let's talk about it from the top. And more importantly, let's talk about what it actually suggests. So, from the top, You'll notice Oprah is walking up to where Taraji is and there's a playfulness there. There's a bounciness, she's dancing, it's rhythmic, so she's having fun with this. And it seems like once she gets to that position, that energy kind of drops. And it's now a little bit slower, a little bit calmer. She walks up to Taraji and it kind of seems like they're both kind of looking away from each other. There isn't a greeting, there isn't much, you know, acknowledgement. Now, the theory might be that this isn't the first thing they're doing that day. So you know they were here a little bit, they were there, so they already interacted, they already said their hellos, and now they're just moving here, so it doesn't merit another greeting. But there's also just not even so much as a smile or a comment or anything. There's no interaction there. And some commenters said that she turns her back to Taraji when she turns to face the camera. Now, although it's a good observation, You'll also notice that there's that woman with the glasses talking to her on the left, so to give her attention, the logical way to turn would have been that way. So yeah, if you're Taraji, from that standpoint, it kind of seems like she's completely turning her back to her, but also in that moment, she's interacting with the woman in the glasses. Now, the next part is something that I pay a lot of attention to, especially when it comes to games of deception. So I really like games of deception, things like Werewolf or Mafia or Among Us, any kinds of games where you're trying to conceal something from the other players. And as you can imagine, I'm a bit of a nightmare to play with. But one of the things that I pay attention to is how easily distracted somebody gets. So if I'm playing a game, I really want to get to the bottom of it. I want to solve it. I'm dead focused on this. I want to keep talking about this. I want to figure it out. But if I'm a little nervous, I'm a little stressed, when an outside thing comes in, an outside element, somebody makes a comment or something happens, my attention might easily go to that because I want to distract away from this tension here, from the fact that somebody might be on to me. So I welcome interruptions. This is something you can really look for, not just in games, but in tense conversations where you're trying to solve something. Is the person contributing to solving this or do outside distractions easily get their attention because they don't want the attention on this thing? So in this case, Oprah seems really interested in what this woman with the glasses is saying. Furthermore, as soon as Danielle comes in, there's a guy closer to the camera that's recording this who yells out something. He yells out, did you think you could escape or something like that. And Taraji takes enormous interest in that. And she kind of laughs at what the guy said. And it's one of those polite laughs. Look at how quickly it wipes away from her face like a switch. So she's just kind of laughing at that out of like, ooh, something else is happening here. I'll give that my attention because it's a welcome distraction. Then we have the big move. So Oprah just leaves from standing next to Taraji and goes to the end and stands next to Danielle. And again, we see a shift in her mood. The same way her mood decreased in the beginning, now as she goes next to Danielle, we see her, you know, liven up a little bit more and she's leaning on Danielle. There's more physical proximity there. But look at Taraji. As Oprah's walking away, we see Taraji look at her and then we see that flutter. The eyes start to flutter the same way that they were doing in that interview in moments of processing and even in moments of frustration. The other thing we notice as Oprah's walking away is that Taraji starts grooming her hair. It wasn't happening up until this moment, but we start to see it now. It starts now and it happens a few more times where she's grooming her hair. And grooming is any kind of gesture we do to fix our appearance and it usually indicates that our attention is focused inwards now. We're more self-aware, which is why a lot of analysts put grooming with self-soothing gestures. It soothes us to fix our appearance. And we start seeing it here quite a lot. Now again, I'm gonna to try to stay on bias and play devil's advocate. 
When it comes to the eye flutter, during the interview, it wasn't constant. So in the moments that it happened, it shows us signs of potentially frustration or processing. But in this case, it is constant. They're pretty high up. It's probably cold. It's windy. We could hear it on the mic. So when it's cold, the eyes dry out faster. So we do blink more often. Plus wind in the eyes causes us to blink. So very consistently, if we look at Taraji, she's doing those flutters. Now I will say that the one that she does as Oprah's walking away is the most pronounced. And it lines up with the fact that she's just looking at Oprah as it's happening. So we can kind of look at it as an important piece. But again, it's just happening so much, the flutters, that it does also kind of get lost in there. The grooming, on the other hand, is a little bit harder to talk away because, yeah, again, it could be just that the wind hits her hair, so she fixes it. But it's at this point, when Oprah walks away, that we start to see a lot more grooming gestures where we weren't up until then. So unless the wind really picked up now and it's really messing with her hair, I don't see how the grooming is necessarily related to the wind when she wasn't doing it at all up until that point. Even in moments where she's posing, before Oprah walks away, we see her lean, we see her smile, but she doesn't groom, which is very strange. It's, we, we often see grooming in those moments where the pictures are taken and we pose, but she only starts intensely grooming after that move. So yeah, there is a bit of a behavioral shift there. But here's the biggest thing that a lot of people missed and not a lot of people talked about. So body language isn't about static behaviors. It's about a shift in behavior. And although there's definitely a shift in the grooming and you can argue that we're seeing some distancing, if we look at Taraji's interactions with any of the other three individuals who are there, it's not really much different. It's not like she's a certain way with Oprah and then when Fantasia shows up, she's all smiles and hugs and positivity. She's pretty consistent with the way that she's acting. She's mostly to herself. She's posing for those cameras. We're not seeing big energy, big positivity. There's a point where she jumps into the song and kind of smiles as they're singing. But even in that moment, we're not seeing enormous positivity in her body language. So is the way she's behaving with Oprah a little cold, a little distant, a little evasive? Yes but that's also pretty consistent with the way she's behaving overall. Now, Oprah, on the other hand, is a bit of a different story. We are seeing a shift with Oprah. So again, she comes in with this positivity and it seems to kind of muffle when she's around Taraji. And then when the other stars come and she moves around behind Danielle, it seems to come back up. So it does seem that in the case of Oprah, the way she's behaving around Taraji is a little different from the way she's interacting with the other individuals. But again, I want to try to be as unbiased as possible and look at this from all possible angles. Let's also consider the possibility that Oprah is potentially the most famous interviewer who ever lived. She's very, very good at picking up on what someone is giving her and playing off that. So it's very possible that she picked up that Taraji is being a little distant, a little, you know, lower energy, and that's what's lowering her energy. And then when the other two show up, it's bringing her energy up. It's possible. We need to consider that. So overall, what do I think about this interaction at the Empire State Building? I think that people who are seeing tension there and saying, oh, there's something going on here, are very clever for doing so. They're picking up on things that I could definitely look at and say, yeah, there's some avoidance there. They're looking away. They're welcoming distractions. Oprah's energy is dipping and rising in relation to the distance between her and Taraji. We're seeing some coldness there. So I think all these things are valid observations. I just think we need to slow down before we jump to conclusions. And this is where a lot of people tend to fumble up. We make the observations and then we immediately jump to a conclusion that's more dramatic, more interesting. Whereas we could look at this and go, okay, it could simply be that Taraji is just being a little distant with everyone and maybe Oprah's picking up on that. So yeah, I do think there's some tension going on. There's some dip in energy surrounding Taraji, but I don't think this is evidence that there's definitely this big fight going on between the two and that there's some kind of hidden hate between the two. I think there's a possibility of that. I don't think it's definitely that. And I also don't think that there's too many moments of positive interaction here and that counts for something. So it's not this big warm positive thing. It's somewhere from neutral to not so positive in this moment. But the internet is what it is and people started talking and speculating that there's some kind of tension between the two 
based on that evidence, which again, I don't think is unreasonable. I just think we need to consider other options. So Taraji made a post where she put a picture of her and Oprah, and under that, she wrote about how Oprah has been nothing less than a steady and solid beacon of light to all of the cast of The Color Purple. And she has provided encouragement, guidance, and unwavering support to us all. And she goes on and on in that direction. But let's take a quick look before we conclude at this post. So first of all, let's look at the picture. I would say it's a pleasant picture, but I'm not seeing a relationship of love and positivity and embrace here. You'll notice they're both blocking in front of them with their hands. So they're both in a closed in position, especially because it's not just the hands in front of them, it's also the arms are, are close in on both. Now again, it's cold up there. So that could simply be because it's cold up there, but you know, important to note. Second, if you look at their midsection, there's distancing happening from both of them. So they're not close to each other with their bodies, they're not hugging, they're not embracing. There's some distance happening there. So is this the epitome of two people who are super positive and thankful and happy to be working together? It's not. I don't think it's the epitome of the other direction either. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. But if anything, it does read as a little bit more distant than super loving and thankful. But let's take a second to read the actual post. So it's about how Oprah has been a beacon of light. And then she goes on to say, she told me personally to reach out to her for anything I needed and I did. It took one call, one conversation, and one decision making black woman to make me feel heard. So I'm seeing a lot of positive words. I'm seeing a lot of Taraji saying she appreciates Oprah and Oprah has done a lot of good for her and the cast. What I'm not seeing is a denial of any of the rumors that were flying around, right? Because let's be honest, this post is a direct response to the rumors. The rumors came out saying, oh, there was tension on the Empire State Building, and Taraj is going, no, no, here we are at the Empire State Building, just the two of us, and she writes a post about how encouraging Oprah has been. But nowhere in there is there a denial that there was any form of tension or something going on there. And most importantly, there isn't an actual resolve, right? She was complaining about the wages, the conditions, the future of the pay for the black industry, but in this post, we're seeing that there was a call, there was one conversation, and one decision-making black woman to make me feel heard. You weren't complaining about being heard, you were complaining about the unfair wages in the industry. So she's not quite addressing that. And that's fine, by the way. If Taraji feels like in this conversation, she got what she wanted, she's happy, that that sadness she had on that interview was resolved, that's fine. It's no one's place to say, no, not good enough. It's up to her, her complaint, her solution. All I'm saying is, if anything, the post is more about defending Oprah's character, not her actions, not the way this was handled, not the way this was addressed, but her character overall as a person. She even starts the segment on Oprah with the words, with that being said. So the post begins with her saying, thank you for the support, thank you for the love, thank you for the encouragement, with that being said, Oprah's awesome. So I'm gonna defend Oprah now. So she knows, she knows people are concerned about what she was going through and she's kind of defending the character without addressing the specifics. So to me, to me, it feels like this post has a bit of a PR vibe to it. Let me know if you agree in the comments. This is opinion, by the way. This isn't something I'm telling you behaviorally. I'm supporting my opinion based on some of the word choice I'm seeing, but please, please, Let's get the discussions going respectfully in the comments. Let me know if you agree. Let me know in the comments if to you, this post feels like in this conversation, there were definitely some things that will make the situation better, that there were actual solutions that they came to that will make the situation better. And do you feel like it's an actual denial of all the theories that were out there based on some of the stuff people were seeing? Or do you feel like this is a PR thing to put forward this united front of harmony and we all get along and we all encourage each other. What's the feeling you're getting? Okay, so this outro is gonna look and sound a little different because I filmed it and then in editing, I realized that there was a problem with the sound and I would have skipped it, 
but I really did want a chance to wish you all a very, very happy new year and to say how thankful I am that you're all here. It's amazing to see how this community has grown. We're turning the corner on a million subscribers and there's no way I could have done this without every single one of you. So I'm so thankful that you're here. I wanna wish you and your loved ones a very happy and healthy new year and I will see you on the next video in a new year.